Hi everyone, welcome back to Print and Play. And it looks like the Raspberry Pi Foundation is hitting the ground running in 2021 by introducing a brand new Pi to the lineup, the Pico. Now, unlike previous devices in the line, the Pico is not meant to be a single board computer. Rather, it's a new microcontroller device that operates more in the same workspace as the Arduino. Basically, it's a board that comes with a bunch of general purpose I.O. that allows you to power all sorts of projects, and it comes in at a price of about $4 US. The Pico is powered by the RP2040 microcontroller, which is a custom designed microcontroller by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's a dual core ARM Cortex processor running at 133 MHz, and it has 264 kilobytes of RAM and 2 megs of internal storage. For input output, it has 26 multifunction pins. Included in that are three analog pins, as well as two UART, two SPI controllers, two I2C controllers, and 16 pins that support pulse with modulation. The USB port on it, which is used to program the device, can also be used in host mode, allowing it to connect to and interact with other devices. The board also supports being used as a mass storage device, allowing you to drag and drop your code onto the device for execution instead of having to flash it, like on similar devices. It supports input voltages from 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts, and it's designed to operate at temperatures between minus 20 degrees Celsius all the way up to 85 degrees Celsius. And to top it all off, it has an integrated temperature sensor. The board has through-hole connectors for you to solder your header pins to, but it also has perforated edges so you can design a circuit board that goes around it and just solders into place. Another awesome feature is the pads they've added to the bottom of the board to allow you to connect to the USB port. The data in and data out are connected via TP2 and TP3. This means you'll be able to get easy access to the USB port even if you bury your Pi in a project. The board can be programmed using C or MicroPython, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation has released a book of documentation with samples to help you get up and running in the language of your choice. To start off with my Pico, I soldered header pins to it to make it usable with a breadboard. Ideally, I would have soldered the board with the pin labels up, but that puts the boot selector button out of reach. So for now, I'll rely on diagrams to remember which pin is which. Next, I loaded up the test program I wrote in MicroPython. From Windows, I used the Thawney IDE to load the test code. My program takes any word or sentence, converts it to Morse code, and then plays out that Morse code using the LED built onto the board. And that's it, the board is now running my code, and flashing Morse code for SOS. I really like how instantaneous the code execution is, since the IDE and the Pico are in constant communication over the serial terminal. That serial connection also allows me to print out each letter as it's called in code so I can see exactly what it's processing. So as you can see, the Pico is gearing up to be a strong competitor for the traditional Arduino microcontroller. Blinking the light on and off just touches the surface and I've already got a few projects in mind to try out with the Pico. On top of that, there are more devices based on or around the Pico in the works, including an add-on board that gives it the ability to output video and more. To get yours, head over to the Raspberry Pi website. From there, you'll be directed to local suppliers for the Pico, where applicable. Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. For more Raspberry Pi content, including the new Pico board, as well as 3D printing and retro gaming content, make sure to subscribe. If you liked this first look, don't forget to click the like button, and let me know in the comments down below what your first Pico project's going to be. And until next time, stay creative.